Welcome to the Mass Startup Podcast. This podcast explores the journeys behind some of Africa's emerging entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses. The Mass Startup Podcast profiles the most talented creators, impactful entrepreneurs, and high-performing professionals with the purpose to drive insights, learnings, and tactics to help you build what you believe in. So just before we kick off today's episode with some incredible entrepreneurs that are doing amazing work, trying to shift coffee habits and culture in South Africa, but also across the world, I'd like to remind you that we are constantly finding tools, resources, and insights that help any entrepreneur and small business run their businesses better. And in that light, we continue to have an incredible partnership with Sage Accounting South Africa. Sage Accounting software is designed specifically with your business in mind. Sage Accounting software will help you easily create reports, view your finances, process VAT, and international payments. Stay up to date on the latest financial legislature and so much more. So we have an amazing offer for any entrepreneur or small business or startup that's trying to formalize their business better, automate a lot of the work, Um, on admin side and on your accounting side and we're going to include that link in the show notes um, with the offer code for you to do a 30-day trial just to see you know how impactful this can actually be for your business thank you so much for listening and enjoy today's episode hey i'm lulu lache i'm one of the co-founders of four weeks um, Four Weeks is a coffee company. We have partnered with some of the best local roasters in South Africa. We pack their freshly roasted coffee into compostable pods or caps. And yeah, fresh as eggs, they best enjoy in four weeks. And how's it, guys? I'm Dan. I'm actually Lou's cousin, and I'm also the co-founder of Four Weeks. I'm head of product development, and yeah, absolutely loving what we're doing at the moment. That's amazing. Um, so just to go into what you guys started, um, where did it all start for you guys? Go for it, Dan. So, I'll jump in here. So uh, yeah, I studied um, a Bachelor of Business Science at UCT and I've always loved coming up with ideas and trying to pursue those ideas. And it was back in 2014 when Nespresso's patent ended that my dad actually came up with an idea to develop the first ever home compostable capsule. And I was really intrigued with the idea. It formed many dinner time conversations. And uh, yeah, he actually did a year of research into this compostable product. And, you know, he brought me into it. And anyway, he didn't end up taking up the idea. And I carried on with my business science. And towards the end of my final year, I was sort of thinking, you know, what am I going to do when I leave varsity? I wasn't really interested in becoming a CA. And this idea has, has sort of always stuck with me. And so, you know, I chatted to my dad and my brother, who's also a founder of Four Weeks, and we decided that we would give it a go. And uh, whilst my brother was away doing an internship, I was stuck on the farm to sort of try and conceptualize this idea. And that's where Lou came in and, and she offered some of her time. And and yeah, that was really where Four Weeks was born. And um, please tell me more about just um, the industry of pods and the history of, you know, pods as they exist. Obviously, there was a sort of patent um, that Nespresso had for a long, long time. And um, the importance of sort of evolving from where they have began. That's correct, yeah. So Nespresso developed um, the technology behind their Nespresso machines, obviously, and had the patent for 20 years. Um, As Dan mentioned, that came to an end in 2013, um, and then they needed to open source their technology, and hence you could see a lot of Nespresso-compatible capsules, coffee capsules, coming onto the market. Um, Typically, from the onset, these were made from plastic, Um, and then aluminium with an aluminium lid or foil um, to seal the coffee inside the capsule shell. And, I mean, I think that, you know, 
one thing that we have come to recognize is the absolute brilliance of an espresso machine in terms of convenience. It's, it's unbeatable. You know, you need an espresso first thing in the morning. You're very pressed for time. At the click of a button, you can have it, you know, an espresso in seconds. Um, I wanted to also jump into a little bit of what Dan was saying earlier about why and how we started four weeks. And, you know, we are coffee snobs. We absolutely adore coffee. We come from a family who have had some of our most memorable moments over a flat white or delicious cappuccino. We, whenever we're in different cities, we hunt out, you know, the best coffee spot. And we always, yeah, we weren't really huge fans of some of the coffee that you could enjoy through an espresso machine. But at the same time, you know, again, recognize the brilliance when you are in a boardroom meeting and there are 13 people around a table and everyone wants a coffee. Of course, it's, it's from a capsule. So there are two elements to that, which is number one, obviously, in terms of being plastic and aluminium, the unsustainability and the waste of the single use capsule or pod market. Just to put it in perspective, um, I think the latest stat is that 400 Nespresso's are drunk every second, mm. just to kind of get the scale globally, yes. So, I mean, it's a massive, massive industry. And as I mentioned, you know, the convenience is kind of unparalleled, um, but the waste is really an issue. Yeah. Um, um, I think I, it, I was just... Sorry, go for it. Sorry about that. Um, so, I think I told you the story of how I ended up with a Nespresso machine, right? So, um, my old boss... His wife, you know, learned a lot around um, Nespresso pods and how wasteful they can be and the impact that they have on the environment. And he was like, hey, do you want a coffee machine? I was like, yes, definitely. And I didn't think at the time I understood, like, the impact in terms of um, waste that really, that really goes back into the environment because of using um, these pods. Um, how different are the pods that you guys have created um, or are using and um, what's the impact that they have um, on the environment? So, yeah, I'll jump in. Um, so, as Lou mentioned earlier, most capsules or single-use capsules that are used in espresso machines, they're mainly made from either plastic or aluminium. Um, and, you know, obviously these generate a lot of waste and like 80% of capsules used globally is land up in landfills. Um, where they sit for, you know, hundreds of years. And the figure that has come to, or that we've come across is 400 to 500 years. And we really wanted to look at, you know, the circular economy and how can we turn a waste product into, you know, something that we can use and sell. And that's when we're really drawn to Bagasse, um, which is a sugarcane pulp. Um, we have lots of excess sugarcane in South Africa. Sadly, most of it is exported globally by SAPI. Um, but yeah, we identify this as an excellent material in terms of its fibers and its structural strength. It really has the ability to form a capsule shell. And uh, it's a 100% natural product and it's 100% home compostable, which means that if you toss it into your home compost bin or the cashew bin, it will break down. You know, it starts to break down in four weeks and in two months, it's completely gone. And so, you know, we understood that, that a natural material does have natural flaws, but we really wanted to challenge ourselves to try and launch something that we knew was truly compostable. That's amazing. Um, how important is the sustainability factor in um, your business as, 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 a, as, a, as a motivating factor to build this out? Um, I think not enough people are really thinking about how sustainable the things they use in their houses are, um, how conscious they are about, you know, how much energy they're using, how much impact they have on the environment. But you guys have clearly thought about this and it's really, really core cool to your business. How important is it and has it been a motivating factor for why you exist? I would say most definitely. Um, there are a few pillars to our business. Um, one of those is having the greatest um, possible impact on people. And the other is having the, the lowest possible impact on the planet. And that's really driven a lot of our decisions. Um, you know, when it came to, you know, four weeks and birthing it, 
obviously as coffee snobs we really you know wanted to kind of make the most amazing local coffee available freshly roasted at the push of a button at the same time really address this issue of waste um and that's been you know kind of and as dan said really looking at waste and how we can um innovate at waste you know waste is a design flaw and um so we really pushed ourselves on both those ends both in terms of coffee excellence as well as sustainability um dan do you want to add in a little bit more about that yeah so i think that like one of our you know what really gets us up in the morning is our well, purpose statement is that four weeks exist to shift coffee habits and culture And I think that I read an excellent book last year by James Clear called Atomic Habits. And, you know, he highlighted that, you know, picking up small habits can lead to, you know, vast or big differences. And that's, you know, where we really saw the power of of this little pod is that, you know, if people could get used to understanding how to manage their waste and how to dispose their waste, you know, that habit could have a ripple effect into different um, areas of their lives. And I think that, you know, where this really became tangible was when we launched at the Aronis of City Farmers Market. And um, after a few weekends of sales, uh, one of, you know, our customers came back to us and said, you know, they had just bought a Bakashi bin and that they were now home composting at home. And that, that really resonated with us and made us excited, you know, that we have the ability to, to shift or to encourage people to pick up good habits. Mm. And, you know, speaking of coffee culture and shifting that as well, um, you know, during lockdown, when, you know, all the coffee shops were closed, the one thing that a lot of people were just saying is like, I can't find good local coffee. And, you know, immediately it turned into, okay, how can you make the best possible coffee at home? And a lot of people had to learn different things, whether it was trying to um, roast their own or create, you know, just try and make it as good as possible. And I, you know, have an espresso machine, so I just went straight to, okay, I can buy a bunch of pods, but I could never find local coffee in those pods. And I think it's such an incredible thing that you guys have, you know, invested in this part of it, which really shifts the consumption um, habits of people and changes the culture of people going, you know, I can stay home and still have a really great coffee from the coffee shop that I really love from say down the street or whatever it is. Can you guys talk about the four brands that you guys have on there right now and the process that it took to actually get those guys on, on board as well? So if, Lou, if I can just jump in and just say something quickly, I think uh, Go you know, for it. I'm sure you've touched on a, an excellent point there. Um, and that was that we really noticed when we were coming up with this idea, we noticed the disconnect between local a speciality or artisanal coffee and single-use coffee pods. And, uh, you know, we like you said, we've got these excellent coffee roasteries, you know, down the road, but to have them in the convenience of an espresso machine is currently not available. And, you know, when you ask about who, our, who we partnered and collaborated with, that was really our biggest challenge, was how can we bridge this gap between, you know, an espresso which is an excellent machine and super convenient. And then, the, you know, this delicious, fresh, local coffee roasters. And so, yeah, that sort of was part of birthing this idea. And then Luke can chat us through about how we approached each of the roasters and, 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 and why we approached them. Yeah, we started off in our own backyard. Um, Dan and Ollie, who is... Dan's brother, my cousin, and also our co-founder. And they went to school um, in Franchuk. And after school, they would often pop into Turbidal Coffee Roasters, which is an amazing second-generation family-run roastery. And, um, you know, obviously the relationship they developed with Michael, who's the um, the, the owner and, and, yeah, one of the founders of Turbidal, it was kind of a an easy kind of intro, you know, to approach somebody that we had a relationship with. And as they always say, you know, start in your own backyard. And that proved to be really valuable. And Michael was really excited by the idea and willing to give us a chance. And um, we also had a relationship with um, Vic and Sean from Naked Coffee. And we thought that would be really interesting to get um, a Joburg-based roaster involved as well, especially as they were just about to launch in Cape Town. Um, and, yeah, we we gained quite a bit of courage from getting those two on board. And then we thought, you know, 
who would we really love to have as part of our four weeks um, local coffee or pod collective? And here in Cape Town, Deluxe really does have such an incredible cult status. Um, everybody loves the beloved Deluxe Flat White. So we set up a meeting with Judd, who's one of the co-founders of Deluxe. We took a bottle of rum. We presented our kind of pitch to him and halfway through, um, and we had said to him, Judd, if you're going to give us a chance, um, if you're going to take us on, we're going to open this bottle of rum and celebrate. And if you don't, we're taking it home. We're going to commiserate. Mm. And halfway through our pitch, he was like, let's, let's have some rum. Like, we're in. <laughs> like, he was like, let's go for it, which was epic. It was just one of our, yeah, very, very cool moments. And then... Um, we thought, you know, wow, like how can we really challenge ourselves in terms of, um, an, you know, our fourth and final roaster at the time. And we thought in terms of coffee excellence and, and real sustainability, Rosetta Roastery really has earned their place in the South African coffee landscape as a roastery that really stands for excellence and integrity from A to Z. And we also knew full well the kind of reputation that it's called quote-unquote pod coffee, has with specialty coffee roasters globally. Typically, it's been frowned upon and seen very much as second rate. So we knew we had our work cut out for us. Um, we set up a meeting with Jono, the head roaster of Rosetta Roastery, and we had one of the most informative meetings we've ever had. He really opened our minds to what sustainability really means in coffee, right from the farm um, to the cup. And we would started in the most incredible journey with Rosetta Roastery. Um, not only did they share their expertise in terms of coffee and sustainability and excellence, but they really guided us in terms of how we could achieve excellence um, in a pod or a capsule. So, yeah, big kudos to our roasters. Um, it's been absolutely phenomenal working with all four of them. Each one has something so unique and incredible to offer, and we are just so proud to showcase their coffee and to really celebrate it in a way that is both convenient and kind. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it's one thing to sort of speak about this without the experience, but I've been having um, the coffee that you guys, um, the pods that you guys, I've been using those for a week now, and you you said originally that the jar is supposed to last me about four weeks, but I just don't see that happening. <laughs> But it's, I think it's, it's, it's one, the really good experience of the coffee. I don't know how you guys have sort of used whatever technology you've used or the design of the pods, but I feel like the quality is better. Um, the coffee is just so much better in terms of taste, in terms of experience, the aroma. Um, when I open the jar, there's this amazing smell that comes out as well. Um, how much work goes into sort of developing that sort of, um, model um creating these pods and you know really iterating the product as much as possible to get to a point where you felt that you know what this was ready for the market and also what sort of other products are you guys looking at in the future <laughs> so yeah i mean the dealing with uh the gas sugarcane pulp has, has been really challenging i mean it's an amazing product to deal with and you know, having Lou and Oli by my side as head of product, you know, has really helped us through these through this, you know, challenging period. But I think that we really wanted to, you know, adopt like Eric Lee's lean startup and, you know, launch a minimal product, a minimal viable product. And we always knew that we would we were going to launch a prototype. And that was back on the sixteenth of November last year. And I think that uh, you know, we really wanted to find or, you know, establish our, you know, minimum viable audience and really learn from them, you know, what are the things that they're enjoying and, you know, what are the things that they're not enjoying and, you know, really go through that loop of building, measuring and then learning and then applying that knowledge that you've learned into the product development phase. So, you know, we still, in terms of the biggest part, we still very much um, are constantly developing and researching new materials to use to use, you know, new designs to improve the extraction of the product. Um, so that's where we really are in terms of the pod. And then, you know, you asked what what, are, what new developments or innovations are we looking into. And we have just launched as of Monday our four weeks cap. 
which is an amazing product. It uh, is made from a biomaterial, uh, cornstarch, and it has a much harder feel than our, than our pod, but in terms of uh, the extraction and the performance of the product really is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, Lou can, you know, add to this, but what we've really learned with sustainability is that it's not a straight road. And, you know, there, there are different ways to get to the end point. So, you know, we really want to stick to our vision of shifting, you know, coffee habits and culture. And, uh, yeah, that's where we are in terms of our product. Yeah, and if I can add, a, you know, just a few things, like huge kudos to Dan um, over yeah, nearly two years now, he has been, and in addition to a, a year prior to that of research, he's been completely like every single week chipping away at how to get coffee to perform in a natural product. And if you know anything about coffee, there are so many variables in the chain, right from when the bean was picked to how it was roasted to the humidity in the room, to the grind size, to you name it. Like they are just, there is such a science. And to really be able to crack that science in, in a natural material like bagasse, which is porous, which is, you know, has different types of fibers, density, et cetera, um, has not been an easy, easy solve. But it's, we, we really handled it, and especially Daniel, with a lot of integrity, a lot of tenacity, um, a lot of courage, and also a lot of vulnerability. You know, we've been very honest with people from the onset that we were launching something that was perfectly imperfect, just like we are. Um, we've always had a very real human approach to what we do. Um, and wear our heart on our sleeves and saying that, you know, we really do want to replace every single plastic and aluminium single use capsule with, with a home compostable pod. And that is our absolute moonshot. Um, and I don't know, you know, it might be interesting for you to know, but we have a shell. Um, that, you know, our, our pod is made from, as, as we've said, a bagasse of sugarcane waste. It's got a vegetable fiber lid, and then we've branded it with an edible ink stamp. Um, and, yeah, I think in terms of our cap, which we've, which we've just launched, we are so excited. It really does achieve, like, incredible consistency and a really, really full-flavored shot. So we're absolutely delighted um, by it. And, you know, one of our other kind of pillars in our business is to be ever-evolving. So, I mean, we, we're now meeting with material design experts, um, you know, global experts, and we, we really, yeah, we're on a mission to to really achieve what we what we set out to do. And we think there's a huge need for it. And, yeah, it it's, feels very exciting and also, um, yeah, a huge privilege to be able to work on, on just such an incredible, yeah, concept and need. That's incredible. Um, so you, you have a really interesting logo. Um, and I think you, you, I think you mentioned last week when I met with you guys, um, something in reference to a Japanese philosophy. Could you talk a bit more about that? Yes, sure. Um, so our icon, um, it's we call it the shift icon. Um, it's very, very interesting. It's based on or it was inspired by the Japanese art of kintsugi. And kintsugi is literally the art of making something more beautiful through it having been broken. So, for example, when beautiful vase or piece of ceramic would, would break. It would be um, mended with um, gold. Um, if you Google it, um, you'll see the, some of the most amazing images. And the idea is that something can be made to be more beautiful from having been broken. And if we look at the, if we look at the pod market or capsule in terms of the waste and the environmental you know, damage that, that has been incurred, the system is broken. And it's through coming together, you'll see that there are also four elements to our icon and that the four elements are separate, but together they become one. And, um, yeah, it's about, I guess, fixing the cycle. Yeah, it's so, so incredible what you guys are doing. Um, Daniel, um, what do you hope to achieve um, with four weeks and what do you think the future looks like? So, I mean... Excellent question. And I think, you know, for me, what really is exciting is, as Lou said, is to replace every single plastic and aluminium capsule out there. I think we really are on a mission to achieve this, you know, first in, you know, the next like six to 12 months to do this on a local scale and to perfect the product and then to expand globally. I think that, you know, one of the concepts that has come to us really organically is this idea of waste management. And I think, you know, we get incredibly excited at 
the idea of learning, you know, what is waste and, and how can we manage that? And I think that, you know, Ravi Naidu, who's been a main, an, an amazing mentor to us during this lockdown, you know, he really said to us that waste is a design flaw. Waste is only waste if you waste it. And I think that, you know, for me to try and address this system in South Africa of how can we come up with designs that generate as little waste as possible, for me, that really excites me. So in terms of like the landscape moving forward, you know, I'm not too sure where I'm going to be in two or three years time, but I think to to have that sort of purpose and drive and to come up with concepts that, you know, produce zero waste for me is incredibly exciting. That's incredible. Um, Lulu? Um, from a branding perspective, you guys have really um, worked on, you know, presenting what you're doing in the most beautiful way. Um, what are the sort of things that you hope that um, you guys can shift in terms of coffee culture and using your brand as a, you know, a, a, as a disruptor, as an innovator in the space of coffee culture um, across, you know, South Africa, but also the world? Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for the beautiful compliment. I think, you know, we're all about collaboration. So we, yeah, big shout out to the whole team. And also we worked with an amazing designer, Hanu Van Zale, who helped a lot with the brand identity. Um, in terms of the brand itself, definitely in terms of our purpose and shifting, you know, coffee habits and culture, we really want that to have an A to Z approach. So, for example, working with our roasters, you know, new roasters that we bring on board to our collective or new roasters that we collaborate with both locally and globally, we've now learned so much about what sustainability means within coffee itself. So, for example, we could, you know, we could apply some criteria in terms of, you know, how they could collaborate with us and that could have like a, be a range of different, you know, prices that they pay directly to the farmers, um, you know, organic farming, etc. cetera. Um, and then in terms of habits, as Dan said, you know, we've organically kind of found ourselves in this land of, of waste management and we have a few really exciting, innovative ideas of how we can further connect people to a, to a more conscious state of, knowing what we use and, and what we throw and how we throw it. Um, and I think something that really excites me from the brand perspective is to be able to really build community. Um, we wouldn't be where we are today without the amazing support of people who've really, um, how, can, how can I say this? They've just completely committed um, and attached themselves to four weeks and they are our biggest fans and I think if we have the opportunity to share what we are learning and to inspire people, you know, to even make the smallest change in habits or to learn a little bit more about how to be a little bit more conscious um, and also to add energy to people's days, I think we would have done really well. Thank you so much, guys. I think you're doing absolutely exceptional work and I think it's going to have an incredible impact on people and um, the way they think about coffee and the way they think about coffee at home and, you know, just the impact that they have on the environment and the world um, at large. So thank you guys so much. And I really wish you all the best. Thank you so much for having us. It's been such a pleasure to be on, this, yeah, on your podcast. We just love it. Thank you so much. Perfect.